Those on here on KTN News. Away from that, a post-mortem exercise for the late Sergeant Keep Here Gone Kene is over. But the exercise has left detectives probing his death in a catch-22 situation since it did not reveal much whether his cause of death was suicide or homicide. Our reporter Franklin Wala was present during the exercise and now takes us through what is expected henceforth even as detectives insist on pursuing crucial leads to unravel was behind the gun that took Kenei's life. A crucial exercise that kept everyone waiting in anticipation to get some answers on some of the hard questions surrounding Sergeant Kenei's death. A post-mortem examination exercise that was happening at Chiromo Mochari and one that gave Kenei's family a chance to view his body for the first time since his sudden demise. The mood around Chiromo turned somber. Briefly, his family was taken through what was expected, and the process began under unwatchful eyes of key detectives and experts, with government pathologist Johnston Odor leading the exercise. And after at least three hours, Odor came out with a statement that did not reveal much. The late Kene died because of a single contact gunshot on the wound, which entered the body through the chin and exited on the forehead. What we are yet to establish is uh, whether it was suicide or homicide. And uh, being that uh, there are so many other investigations which are going on to establish that, we've taken samples so that now we'll be able to make our opinion over that. And maybe the range of the gun shooting the I say that it was a contact wound. So it means that the, 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 the gun was in contact with the skin of the chin, yes. Questions were asked and the answers were brief but straight to the point. Maybe it was the fire use of low velocity or high velocity? Uh, it's a pistol, so low velocity. How long did it, the body take uh, after death? Uh, the body was uh, starting to, to undergo decomposition, so we'll give it roughly maybe one to two days. The body examination did not reveal whether this was a murder case, but detectives insist they are pursuing crucial leads, and that's the only way to go. <laughs> On Thursday, they are expected to be back at the scene of crime, with the possibility of reconstructing the scene and compare with the postmortem findings. This will then give guidance on who to be summoned if need be. Uh, there are no any other injuries apart from what you have mentioned. We've taken samples. Yeah. We've taken uh, samples for toxicological analysis. We've taken also swabs from the hands and the, where we saw the injuries for any suit from the, from the, from the firearm, yes which are going to be analyzed. Kenya's death came at a time when investigation into the 39 billion shillings fake HSA military arms tender was ongoing, whereby DP William Ruto's office was adversely mentioned. Kenya worked at Ruto's office and it was claimed he had crucial information about the fraudulent deal. Might that be the cause why he was silenced or what drove the 33-year-old to take his own life? A question that the preliminary investigation file cannot answer just yet. Even though the post-mortem exercise for the late Kipiagoni is done, another critical exercise lies ahead for detectives investigating this case to establish whether it was homicide or suicide. Franklin Wala, KTN News, Nairobi. And as police try to figure out the details of Kenei's death, it is important to mention that the director of criminal investigations, George Kinoti, has once again made his way to the late Kenei's house. Kitty News Hussein Mohammed is there and joins us for an update. Hussein, the DCI boss has made quite a number of trips to that home. Talk to us about the areas in this case giving the police sleepless nights. Way just, this was his first stop uh, just to try and uh, piece up uh, the on, the, on the investigations here at Imada. Uh, for, for, for journalists here, it is a sit and wait uh, for, for them here just to try up and gather up information on what is really happening. Right now, what we can report, Michelle, is that uh, the, the government pathologist uh, Johansson Odor, together with his counterparts, are inside um, in, uh, the, the late uh, Sergeant Kenya's house here.
here, try to tie up and piece up information. Remember yesterday they were unable to rule out if it's a homicide or a suicide. That's why they're here today to try up and gather up information. Um, on, on the DCA boss is a sit and wait to try and see um, in, if he will show up to, uh, on, on the investigation, an investigation that is uh, being watched closely by, by Kenyans all over the country uh, to try up and figure out why, what killed the late uh, Sergeant Kenny, who was attached to DP, uh, the Deputy President William Ruto's office. Michelle. I mean, we've seen the DCI boss, George Kinoti, personally make several trips there uh, to the Imara Daima home, pointing uh, to the, you know, the event that there is quite a bit of evidence linked to this murder uh, that could possibly unlock a lot of leads. What do we know following the post-mortem exercise yesterday? Well, uh, Michelle, the, uh, according to the post-mortem, uh, it is said that uh, his, his, his body, I mean, he, he shot himself. Uh, not, uh, according to the post-mortem, he said that uh, and the bullet uh, went through his chin. Um, no one has been, has been able to rule out uh, if he really killed himself or if, uh, I mean, if, uh, he, he was killed by someone. That's why it's being treated as, a, as death, not a murder yet. But uh, according to the, the investigators here, from the detectives, from the DCI, from the police, who are here. That's why they have come the second time here to try up and piece up um, in the, 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 the puzzle of, of, of what really happened. Remember, uh, the post-mortem or the autopsy will, will, will show exactly what happened yesterday, what we got were preliminary reports of what really happened, as my, my colleague uh, Franklin Waller has reported on his report. Uh, today, we are just wait and see to know I mean, what, what really happened. Remember also, uh, we have spoken a bit of the, uh, the, the neighbors here and, uh, and they're telling us, uh, I mean, they did not hear the gunshot uh, if a suppressor was used or, or a silencer was used uh, where is it uh, it couldn't be found so these are some of the questions that are uh, uh, the, the investigators here and the police detectives and the pathologists are asking uh -huh. to try and piece up uh, the whole information Michelle all right many things there is uh, Hussein Mohammed following up on that report for us and that brings us to